what, if anything, do we have in terms of the genome sequencing of the mutants that we see so far? And of course, we could see many more mutant strains because the larger the number of infections, the larger the likely uh, likelihood of mutations. What do we know about what's coming out of India so far? So, um, you know, this the so-called double mutant strain, that's a misnomer. That's the wrong word to use because, in fact, it has 13 mutations uh, on average. Um, wow. So the two mutations of concern uh, have been uh, consistently of concern. One of them is called the EEC mutation. It's the E484K, uh, if I remember correctly. And the other one is a mutation in uh, 454. So um, again, I might be, you know, the numbers are, there are so many numbers here, uh, but there are two mutations of concern. Um, we know them from other, they, these mutations have also cropped up in other places. Um, and the question that is on everyone's mind is, to what extent do these mutations decrease the effectiveness of uh, vaccination and of natural immunity? Let me take one step back first, which is to say that the reason vaccination works, even if you've had COVID before, is that the amount of immunity that you get than if you've had COVID naturally. And so um, it is very important, even if you've had COVID before, to get uh, vaccinated because the amount of immune response that you get to the vaccine is much greater than you, the amount of immune response that you're getting to natural COVID infection. So that is yet another reason to get vaccinated. Now, all of that said, these two variants of these two mutations are of great concern. The so-called E to K mutation and the L to R mutation, the two, two mutations are of great concern. And I think that, again, it would be very helpful to have data um, on, um, on patients who are getting vaccinated, have completed the vaccine, are two weeks post the second dose of uh, let's say the AstraZeneca vaccine, um, and are still succumbing to uh, COVID and what the severity of that is. It's a simple survey, Barka. It's not a very complicated survey. And I'm told that many hospitals, including the ICMR, which I have great respect for, um, is are doing this survey. Now, in the middle of, as I said, the fog of COVID, it's very difficult to do the survey but it is not impossible. And I think it's very essential because it will guide what to do in terms of making the next generation of vaccines if we need to make one and figuring out what to do on top of that. 